Hey everyone, Mark Giovanni here. In today's video, we're gonna test the cinematic studio strings. You're gonna see me composing in three different styles. First one is sort of like action, staccato, stinato type of thing. Second one is gonna be sort of like slower, suspense, slower, legato type of thing. And the third one is adventure, faster, more energetic, melodic lines. The first two, just the strings. The last one is full orchestra. Now, the way this video has been recorded is we do live classes every week. The last week, we did three classes where we tested this library. And now we've edited those classes a little bit and we've created this video. So, it was live. If my computer crashed, you'll see it crash. If I just struggled with the library, you'll see me struggling with the library. So hopefully that's gonna give you a little bit of a more realistic, sort of like first impression of what I think about the library. Now, a couple of things before we get started. There was a comment in the last video that said, dude, this guy is changing clothes. Uh, it's clearly different days and it must take so much time to record these videos. It's not that, it's not that it takes forever to record this video. It's that again, it's live classes. Those classes are like one hour. The first half an hour is class, the second is Q and A. And that's exactly what happened last week. So maybe different clothes, but that's because of the way it got recorded. Now this obviously is not a new library. So there are already plenty of review videos out there. This hopefully doesn't feel like a review, but rather it's more like putting it to test and kind of like the real world. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Hopefully you can come up with your own conclusions. All right, finally, before we start, this is not a sponsored video, uh, but I've got to say that they gave us this live free for free to test and they let us keep it and we are very grateful. So without further ado, let's get down to compose. What I'll say right away is when you get the library and you load the instruments, this is what you get. Seven patches. That's it. So basically it's the five patches, one, two, viola, etc. Then we've got the ensemble and the ensemble light, meaning less articulations. So what we've got here is violins one. Let's start with uh, let's start with the staccatos. Very conveniently and very elegantly um, and useful, you've got different staccatos here. So you've got the spiccato, you've got the staccatissimo. You've got a staccato and then the forchato, which is cool. So tremolos then, and then the pizzicatos. Pizzicatos, same thing. You've got the... Bartok. And then Colleño. All right, so let's just compose a little bit. Let's let's just have this as a sort of like a reference, like to like our casual kind of big hit to see how this library blends with this. Okay, those threads. You know, a library that is that is just so everything built in one patch. You have to make sure to record everything, like like every key switch and things. Because if you like, if you've got one track and you keep changing things, then you're gonna play it back. You have to make sure that everything's set up so this patch sounds the way you record it. Gotta record these things, and I have to record this guy. And so it's all this information that's at the beginning of the track. This sets the non contortino so no, so regular. This sets the short notes, this sets the just expression, and this guy sets the spigato. So all these things, I'm gonna make sure that you have them record at the beginning of the track um, when you have so many options. Why is that I, I don't hear this guy here? I think it's crashing. Basically, that's what's happening. Let's take a listen to what we composed yesterday. So I like it in a way. I'm, I'm listening to this and, and, and I'm like, hmm, the big or casual hit, I don't like it that bad. These sound a little bit more realistic or what we are used to hear kind of in the movies. Um, straight out of the box and this says a lot of the library. I did um, another quick four bars thing here. Trailer, very simple, just the strings type of thing. Let's 
And the cool thing is it's, it's uh, just out of the box. Now, I did a little bit of layering and stacking. So what we've got is the violins one and one with the spiccato and the staccatissimo. And then we've got the same thing again and again and again, just to add a little bit of thickness, except for the double basses, which is just the spiccato. And what I did is I opened the violins one and the cellos a little bit extra. So if the violins one and two sound here, I opened the violins one a little bit more. And then we've got the violas, cellos that I opened a little bit more. We're gonna move to long notes and see how this library does with legatos. This thing here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, go here. The first time, just violins. Second time, we're gonna have something else. We'll see. Maybe the violas could do this. Let's hear the entire thing. So this is easy, right? Because if it doesn't sing perfectly, it's okay. It's very slow. So that's why I chose this one. The hard one is going to be fast melodies, adventure rhythms, like fast tempo. So that, when it comes to legatos, everything else, no problem. But for legatos, I would struggle a little bit more. And I would like to try that. The theme is going to do like this. some libraries that you if you are trying to play legato uh, for a melody like this it's a little bit of a mess and it's like mm -hmm, still not now if we switch to 
is the Marcato patch that you can see here, and it has the Spiccato overlay. So if I play the Legato, then it's a Marcato with fast attack. And if I jump, I have the Spiccato on top. If I do the Legato, no Spiccato overlay. And now I'm gonna record all the key switches and all this. Key switch, key switch, and then I'm gonna record dynamics. A uh, cool thing about these guys is that you can uh, copy paste from from violins to cellos, from violins to flutes, from violins to whatever you got from CS. And so that's cool in terms of balance, in terms of how the dynamics react and everything, it's just gonna work. What I'm going to do is add on top of this a little bit of violins, one and two staccato. Now, next step, it's gonna be movement. So I'm gonna start with violas. So this, 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 this can be a little bit longer. Now it's not gonna sound longer unless we change the articulation. Right, when we go, here's this forchato, kind of longer. Maybe you have the double basses towards the end. Just at the end. All right. So this is the, the basic. All right, cool. So this starting point, we've got the strings, but we want this to sound a little bit more adventurous. So we're gonna add uh, woods and brass, a little percussion here and there. So what do you think about the library? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna share a few things that I liked about the library and some others that initially I found a little bit jarring. You've seen in the video, there was a point where Cubase completely crashed. Now on CSS Defense, what I would say is, I don't know if it's their fault. What I can say is that when I loaded those six patches in a blank new template, I didn't have any problem. That's one thing. Another thing that was at the beginning was a little bit uh, confusing was the legato delay. The way they build the library is to preserve realism what they decided is to keep like the beginning the attack of each note from the very beginning and there is a little bit of delay and also uh, for the legatos to perform naturally they added that delay which when you are playing it's not that big of a deal it's not that noticeable <laughs> but when you've got other libraries that don't have that much kind of like latency or delay at the beginning of each note it it can get confusing now what i will also say is that you'll get used to it very easy Just practice a little bit you'll get used to it and also a good thing is that every library always has a little bit of uh, latency and sort of like the long notes will have a slower attack the short notes will have a faster attack and also the lower short notes will have a slower attack than the higher pitched short notes like let's say the double bass staccatos will have a slower attack than the staccatos for the violins for example but in this library it's it's very similar and so for example for me for the staccatos for all the staccatos no matter if it's violins one or cellos or double basses it's always sort of like minor 50 milliseconds and for the legatos it's at about minus 150 milliseconds and you can keep that across the entire library and it's not like you have to go with each instrument and align it exactly and you know minus 23.5 milliseconds type of thing no this library is all of them minus 50 milliseconds for example and it just works so in conclusion is we're at the beginning you just have to practice a little bit and it's worth it because you make it sound so much more organic and realistic so those are the only things hopefully they didn't come out like negative things just things 
things that made it a little bit more challenging for me when I started using this library in comparison to other things that I've used, other libraries that I used in the past. In the other hand though, there are many things that I like about this library. First of all, the sound, and I said this in the second class. Have you ever felt like you're composed and you are proud of it, and you go to sleep and next day it's like, crap, this sounds awful, right? In this library though, next day, I just listen to what I composed and I'm like, wow, this is what I'm used to hear in the movies, right? I like very much how they hand these libraries, it's very wide open sound. And that's really cool in general when I'm using sample libraries, you know, the violins already sound a little bit to the left, sounds a little bit to the right, but I generally have to open them a little bit more you know, to mimic that typical, more cinematic sound when I'm comparing my mock-up to a professionally mixed soundtrack, it's like, wow, it sounds way more open, there's more clarity. Cause... And in this library though, it already sounds way, not way, but a little bit more open than other libraries that I use and I like that very much. And I guess it's a little bit because of the, the way they panned it and also the, the scoring stage where they recorded it. It's not as big as, it's big, it's really big. It's 400 square meters, but it's not as big as let's say Sony that's close to 600 or Fox here in town, which is like 700 square feet, it's big, big. One thing that I absolutely love is the Marcato Legato with the Spicato overlay. That's really, really cool and it makes so easy to write like fast, energetic legato lines. That's really cool. And the other thing that I like is it's quite easy to use. It's really cool. The way the layout of the library is very intuitive and very easy to use. And finally, another thing that I like about this library is it's, it's not a cheap library, but it's not either one of the most expensive strings libraries. Um, it sits kind of in the middle. And they also have this, the loyalty program that if you buy a second library for, from them, you have a 30% discount. This library is $3.99, but if you own one of their libraries, you get a 30% discount. Now, if you've watched until this point, Thank you for watching the entire video. What I'll say is don't feel like um, if you really like this library, don't feel that you have to buy the library or don't even feel like you have to own everything or, or, or don't feel like if your, your music doesn't sound the way you want it to sound, it's because you don't have the tools, because you don't have the libraries. Libraries are very important for sure and own the best quality libraries that you can. But what is even more important is get to know your libraries and know how to make them sound good. In the beginning with this library, I was struggling. I wasn't able to make it sound good. It took me a little bit to get it where I wanted it to be and it's two things it's the composing a skill for sure and then it's also the again getting to know your libraries getting the most out of them so in that regard they've put together a 30 minutes free class that teaches a little bit of the so like the, the composing and synchestration part of things first part of the class is creating a sketch and the second part of the class is orchestrating a sketch it's a mock-up that's similar to what we've done like the adventure type of style a little bit more developed so check it out if you're interested link down below thanks for watching subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one